Well, hello there and welcome back to our videos on the topic of the eye. Now, in our last video, we were looking at the question of how do we see? And uh, we saw that it starts with light entering our eye uh, and then that light is bent by a number of structures uh, in order to focus the light uh, onto the retina and to form an inverted image on the retina. And hopefully you also remember that the retina is a layer which contains photoreceptors or cells which are sensitive to and which respond to light. So in this video, we'll be taking a closer look at the structures uh, in the retina and what happens there so that we are able to detect and to see that object uh, which is outside of us. Right, first, we need to be aware of some of the structures found on our retina. Now, if you take a look at the retina, you'll see that there's a depression here, a little depression, and it's called the fovea. Now, the fovea, which is also called the yellow spot, uh, is where images are normally focused at the highest focus, the highest detail. And uh, it contains the greatest concentration of cones, right, which allow, as we'll see later on, allow for color vision. And because there's a very great concentration of cones, it allows us to see things at a very high resolution or very high detail. So I want you to Im imagine that you're looking at the front of your classroom. So maybe just draw an image of the front of your classroom. Right, you might see a whiteboard here, you might see a teacher's table here. Uh, roughly you see everything. And then one of your friends goes up you know, to make a presentation. And you want to focus on looking at her face. Let's say you're focusing on her face. Uh, not because you're attracted to her, but because you're just trying to pay attention. So you look at her face. Now you can see her face in very great detail. Now that's probably because the image of her face is falling on your fovea. So let me draw uh, the image of her face on your fovea. Now of course, you're able to see the whiteboard as well and the table as well around her, but it's not in such strong focus. So those parts of the image are probably falling on other parts of your retina. So let me just draw, maybe the whiteboard is falling here, and then you see the table here, you see the table. So on other parts of your retina, but not the fovea. So the part of the image which falls on the fovea is the one that you see with the highest detail and the greatest resolution. You can see everything else, uh, but the part on the fovea you can see in the greatest detail. Now next, we also have the optic nerve. And the optic nerve here is what transmits nerve impulses from the retina to the brain. So all the photoreceptors, uh, they will detect light and then they will, they will produce nerve impulses. And those nerve impulses will be transmitted from the eye to the brain through the optic nerve. Now finally, you'll notice this spot over here. Now this spot over here is known as the blind spot. It is where the optic nerve leaves the eye. And uh, we'll look at the structure a bit later. But because it is where the optic nerve leaves the eye, there are actually no photoreceptors found here. So if there's a part of the image which falls on the blind spot, technically it should look like a blotch of black in our visual uh, image in what we see. Uh, however, that's not the case, and later we'll see uh, some interesting facts about our blind spot. But for now, just know that the blind spot is where the optic nerve leaves the eye and where there are no photoreceptors. Now, let's take a closer look at the structure of the retina. Okay, so let's orientate ourselves first to this diagram over here. So here, I want you to notice that the direction of the light is coming from here upwards. So light is shining this way in. Okay, so this back part here is the choroid layer, okay, and this is the sclera. So I want you to imagine that uh, this is like an eye, let me just draw the eye, and here's the iris, here's the pupil, light is moving in, right, and we're looking at this part here at the back. So the sclera, then the choroid, and then we're looking at the retina. So this is the surface of the retina, which is receiving the light rays. So light rays are coming in and they're going to hit the retina. Now over here we have the photoreceptors. So we have cones which look like cones and we have rods which look like rods. So these are our photoreceptors which will detect the light. But you'll notice that in front of the uh, photoreceptors there are some nerves. 
right? So these are nerve fibers which will eventually move uh, to the optic nerve. So when light comes into the retina, it will stimulate the rods and the cones. And the rods and cones will generate electrical impulses and that will cause these uh, neurons here to be stimulated which will then cause these neurons here to be stimulated which will carry the nerve impulses to the optic nerve. Alright, so now let's take a closer look at our rods and our cones and see what they do. So cones are photoreceptors that allow for color vision uh, and they work best in bright light. Uh, we have three types of cones. Uh, they are sensitive to different wavelengths of light and hence different pigments. We have red, green and blue cones. So this allows us to see the different kinds of colors. Uh, you might be wondering, how is it possible that we see so many different colors with just three types of cones? Uh, I'll leave you to think of that. There's something to do with the RGB of your TV. Um, you can mix colors together to get other colors. So you can imagine that uh, depending on how strongly each, depending on how strongly each kind of cone is stimulated, we can get different combinations of uh, stimulation, which allows us to perceive different kinds of colors. So, for example, if uh, I'm red and blue were both stimulated, then we'd see something like a purple magenta color. And next, we look at rods. Uh, so here is a rod. Uh, we can see that it has. And here's a cone, right? So you can see that they are actually normal, they are actually cells, right? They're just modified cells which are specialized for detecting light, but right? they have a nucleus and they have an outer segment which contains uh, the chemicals which help them to detect light or make them photo or light sensitive. So in a cone cell, right, we saw that we had the different pigments. In our rod cell, it also has uh, some uh, pigments that help to detect light. So rods are photoreceptors that allow for non-color vision or black and white vision. And they allow us to see even in dim light. So they are a lot more sensitive than cones. So dim light, a small amount of light will be able to stimulate the rod, but it will not be able to stimulate the cone. So in very dim environments, it is our rods that are stimulated and that help us to see um, in the dark, in a dim light. Right, and rods contain a pigment, only one kind of pigment, right, called visual purple. Uh, and visual purple is what allows us to see in the dark. Okay, the scientific name for it is rhodopsin. You can go look this up if you like. Okay, time for you to do a bit of work by yourself. Go and open up your textbook. Uh, you can read this page on 275. Uh, what vitamin is important for producing visual purple, which is fine our rods? And also, have you ever tried walking into a dark room uh, after being in the sun for very long? You realize that you know you need some time to adjust right your eyes before you can see in a dark place. So why is that? Right, it has something to do with visual purple. Uh, so go look in your textbook to see if you can find the answer. So there we have it. Here's our retina, and here are our photoreceptors. Right now, you might be wondering. And some of you might have asked this very good question, right? The light is coming in from here, right? And the photoreceptors are what detect the light. So why is it that the nerve fibers are in front of the photoreceptors? Right? Wouldn't it make more sense for the photoreceptors to be in front and then the nerve fibers at the back? Uh, well, this is a question that a lot of people have thought about, actually. And some people have claimed that humans have a very badly designed eye, that if God exists, then you know he's very bad at designing the human eye. So for example, you can take a look at this diagram here. Remember, light is entering from here, right? So the photoreceptors are all at the back here. I'm going to shade the photoreceptors. These are the photoreceptors. And then there are all the nerve fibers which are in front, which is here. Okay, I'm going to draw the nerve fibers in a different color for you. So the nerve fibers I'm going to shade in blue. So these are the nerve fibers and they're moving. All of them will eventually uh, come together uh, to form the optic nerve, right? So the nerve fibers take signals from the photoreceptors and they all come together to form the optic nerve. Now can you see that the nerve fibers are in front of the photoreceptors? Would it make more sense to put the receptors in front? And because the nerve fibers are in front of the photoreceptors. That is why you have a blind spot. Can you see that? 
because all the nerve fibers need to come into the optic nerve. And here at this part, you can't have any photoreceptors behind, right? It will block the nerve fibers. So that's why there are no photoreceptors in the blind spot. So why do we design it this way? I mean, actually in octopus eyes, it's designed the other way, right? If you look at the octopus eye, the nerve fibers are behind and the photoreceptors are in front. So some people have asked, why is it like that? Go and explore this question by yourself. I'll be very interested to hear the discussion that you guys have over WhatsApp uh, or in class. All right, but let's end off again by looking at how do we see, right? We saw that it's about light rays entering the eye and then they're refracted by a number of structures. And then, right, and light rays are then focused on the retina to form an inverted image, right? An image that's upside down. Our photoreceptors on the retina, the cones and the rods are then stimulated. Right, so both cones and rods are stimulated. And the nerve impulses are produced by the photoreceptors and then they're transmitted through neurons uh, through the optic nerve to the brain. So what then happens in the brain? Now, in fact, some of you might be wondering, why is it that we don't see the world upside down? I mean, you know, the image on the retina is an inverted image. So why don't I just see an inverted image, like, like my pinhole camera, right? Why don't I just see an inverted image? Well, the reason is because uh, it doesn't stop at the eye. Remember the nerve impulses that are transmitted through the optic nerve to the brain? Well, once the nerve impulses reach the brain, and in particular the visual cortex of the brain, which is found at the back of your brain, the brain actually processes the information so that we perceive an upright image. In a sense, it, it flips the image around, so that what you see is a upright image and not an upside down one. So there's, an, there's a lot of visual processing uh, that takes place in your brain. It's a bit like video editing, right? Here the eye is just a recording whatever comes in, but the brain still processes the information, edits it a bit so that it looks right. right? So there's a lot of visual processing that helps you to also perceive the world. So someone has said before that we see with the eyes, but we see with the brain as well. Our eyes help us to see, but the brain also helps us to process the information so that we see things uh, in a certain way. So there's more than meets the eye in some sense. Another example of this more than meets the eye thing where the brain helps us to see is in this kind of uh, images you might have seen before. This actually helps you to identify your blind spot. Now if you, if you, take, if you focus on this dot, uh, cover one eye, focus on this dot, and uh, move your face away from the screen. So put it very close and move it away. At some point, you will see this shape disappear because the image of this shape will be falling on your blind spot. But instead of seeing a dark blotch of nothing there, your brain will actually help you to see it as a gray area. So your brain actually helps to fill up the blind spot so that you see gray instead of nothing there. Now again, this is another example of how your brain helps to process information so that you see things in a certain way. I hope I can go through this with you in class because it's really cool. You can try this with this image here too um, and see what the brain helps you to fill up this space with. Alright, so that's all for this video. right? We've looked at the different parts of the eye and their different functions. Uh, we looked at how we see right? light entering our eye, being refracted, the image on the retina, signals being sent to the octave nerve, to the brain, and so on. Right, in the next uh, video, we're going to take a look at how the eye um, adjusts itself to see under different conditions. Dim conditions, bright conditions, near objects, far objects, you have it. That's what we're going to be doing next. So I'll see you there. See you.